Today, we're going to read the book, The Biggest Bear, by Lynn Ward. This book is a Caldecott Medal Award winner. The Caldecott Medal honors the illustrators of children's picture books. Remember, an illustrator is a person who draws the pictures for the books. The first medal was given out in 1938. Author and illustrator Lynn Ward won the award in 1953 for the book, The Biggest Bear. You can always find a Caldecott Award winner by looking for the medallion or medal on the front cover. Johnny Orchard lived on the farm farthest up the valley and closest to the woods. On the hill behind the barn, Johnny's grandfather had planted a few apple trees. These were the only apple trees in the valley, and they were known as orchards. Orchard. Whenever Johnny went down the road to the store for a piece of maple, maple sugar or something, he always felt humiliated. The other barns in the valley usually had a bearskin nailed up to dry, but never Johnny's barn. Every fall, for three years, Mr. McLean had come in with a bear. And one evening, Mr. Pennell had just stepped out to the edge of his nearest field and shot three in a row as they came heading for the tall timber. It is true that Johnny's grandfather had met a bear once when he was on the way back from picking apples, but he had gone in one direction while the bear had gone in another. When Johnny had asked him why, his grandfather had said, Better a bear in the orchard than an orchard in the bear. For Johnny, it was very humiliating. Johnny said, If I ever see a bear, I'll shoot him so fast you won't know what hit him, and we'll have the biggest bear skin in the whole valley. After he had gone quite a way into the woods, he came to a place where there was a big stump, and something seemed to be moving in the bushes behind it. It was a bear, all right. He seemed hungry, so Johnny gave him a piece of maple sugar. On the way home, the bear ate all the maple sugar Johnny had in his pocket. Johnny's mother and father were a little surprised to see that Johnny had really brought a bear back with him. Johnny's grandfather said, Huh, I suppose you know what a bear likes to eat. The bear liked the milk that was meant for the calves. He liked the mash meant for the chickens. He liked the apples in the orchard. He liked pancakes on Sunday morning. And most especially, he liked the maple sugar Johnny brought him from the store. There was hardly anything he didn't like, and Johnny's mother got pretty upset when he started looking for things on the kitchen shelves. In the fall, Mr. McCarroll got pretty upset when the bear spent a night in his cornfield. In the winter, he had a wonderful time with the bacons and hams in the Pinnell smokehouse. It was bad enough that he emptied all the sap buckets when the McLeans were tapping their maple trees in the spring. But it was worse later when he got in the McLean shed and drank up most of their maple syrup. He was always eating, it seemed, and he grew pretty fast and got pretty big. Finally, Mr. McLean started talking to Mr. Pennell. They both went to see Mr. McCarroll. Then they all came to see Johnny and his father. What they had to say about Johnny's bear was plenty. He was a trial and a tribulation to the whole valley. After the neighbors had left, Johnny's father explained to Johnny that the bear would have to go back to the woods. So the next morning, Johnny started out. They walked for miles due west on an old lumber road, way past Baldwin's Hill, to an old clearing that was overgrown with raspberries. 
Johnny explained to the bear that the time had come for him to go and live in the woods like other bears. He gave the bear a last hug and started the long walk home. While he was doing the chores the next morning, Johnny saw that the bear hadn't stayed in the woods very long. So Johnny started out again, due east this time, to the blueberry bluff, way past Watson's Hill, and when Johnny left him, the bear was eating blueberries very happily. But two days later, he was back again. This time, Johnny took him due south and got a boat and rode two miles out in the lake and left him on Gull's Island, which is a pretty big island. But the next morning, there he was, not even very wet. Johnny and his father talked it over, and they decided there was only one thing to do. Johnny said he would do it. They didn't really have to go very far, but Johnny somehow kept on walking. They went north this time. There were no roads here, and it was a part of the woods where Johnny had never been before. At last they stopped. Johnny seemed to have a hard time getting a bullet in the gun. While he was working with it, the bear seemed to get a whiff of something. Without warning, he took off through the woods, and Johnny went with him. They went through the woods so fast that Johnny lost his gun, but he held on to the rope. They seemed to be heading for a sort of little log house. They went through the doorway pretty fast, and something came down with a bang, and they were prisoners. When Johnny looked around, he saw the bear was happily chewing on a big lump of maple sugar that had been put in the trap for bait. Pretty soon, some men came. They were a little surprised to see Johnny in there. They explained to Johnny that they were getting animals for the zoo in the city. They were delighted with Johnny's bear. He was much bigger than they had ever hoped for. He will have a fine place to live and all he wants to eat, the men told Johnny. And you can come and see him whenever you want to. And I'll always bring him maple sugar, said Johnny.